Today, innovators, builders, and dreamers are coming together across every sector of industry and representing elements of society, they converge to build together a new layer of the internet, giving rise to Web3 and making good on the promise it holds to create a more open and inclusive global economic system. This new economic infrastructure with trust and transparency at its core will act as a bridge connecting traditional financial systems to a more decentralized DeFi world that is expanding at internet scale. Here, money moves freely, untethered from the inefficiencies of the past. Value travels without friction at the speed of the internet all over the world. And in its wake, opportunity grows. Private and safe connections, a world of non-exclusionary transactions, this is the just global financial system everyone deserves. And together, we are its architects. Today, we are helping merge new technology, forward-thinking enterprises, and committed people for the benefit of all. This is where purpose, potential, and prosperity converge. Good morning and welcome. Um, this is incredibly exciting to be here with all of you. Um, this is the first time we've done an event like this. Uh, we've got thousands of people here, which is amazing. Um, it's going to be uh, an, incredible, uh, an incredible few days. Um, there's a lot that we're going to be doing here. Uh, there's obviously a lot of tremendous programming. Um, we have a lot of really cool things that we're going to be announcing. There's a special announcement here uh, around 12 or something like that. Uh, that we're going to do as well. Um, so I encourage you to, to check back for that. Um, but I, I want to kind of start um, just framing a little bit kind of where we are uh, today. And, and I think we are at a pivotal moment. Um, we're a piv at a pivotal moment in time for our industry. The, the level of attention on this industry around the world is that it's hot, the highest it's ever been. Policymakers, uh, corporations, developers, all around the world. There's more attention than we've ever seen. And the fundamental question that I think everyone is asking is, how are we going to move from the speculative value phase of crypto to the utility value phase of crypto? And that's really the heart of the matter that, of what I want to talk about and which I hope is a theme that drives a lot of the conversations here at Converge. So, I think it's very easy to kind of zoom in and go negative. It's very easy in a macro environment that is extraordinarily complex, that's affecting this industry more than it's ever affected this industry. It's affecting the entire world. I, I think it's very easy to zoom in and look at, frankly, what have been humiliating and reckless actors that have tarnished this space and go negative. Um, it's, it's very easy to feel negative in a crypto winter. People are focused on, uh, on, on price and these things. And it's also, I think, for some, it's very easy to kind of go negative on you know, the intensifying amount of policy and regulatory action that's happening. Like, all of these things are, 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 are difficult. And I think for, for many people in our industry, they say, wow, this is, this is a complex, difficult time. But I think it's really important to kind of put in perspective really where we are. And so I want to start just zooming way out, uh, like way, way out, and think about this in the context of a bigger arc. And that's the arc of the internet itself. The, it is an architecture uh, that the internet was founded on many decades ago. This idea of open networks, of open standards and protocols, of, of connecting entities and devices and people in interoperable ways, of a globally connected world, of decentralized systems. That's the architecture of the internet that has made it what it is today. It enshrines important values. And that arc has been with us for decades. And in many respects, when we think about that architecture, it has transformed 
society and the economy in very, very deep ways. So that arc and architecture of the internet is, is, is continuing to evolve. And in my mind, crypto is an organic outgrowth of that DNA. Crypto is a response to the increasing role of the internet in society and the economy. And so with that in mind, zooming way back, and we start to zoom in a bit, we see that crypto as a technology is, in our minds, a new operating system layer of the internet. Quite literally, these layer one infrastructures and layer zero infrastructures and, and what we talk about from a technology perspective, this is like a new operating system layer for the internet. And crypto is a new model for trusted computing, for trusted data, for trusted transactions, for, for enhancing security and privacy in deep ways that the existing internet architecture hasn't solved. So we have this powerful new infrastructure layer. And in my mind, it's a system that is really designed and is being designed by many of you here to build new social and economic structures that are native to the internet, that are natively built on the internet. And it is, in, in many ways, that's the organic outgrowth of the internet itself, is that crypto is a response to the greater role of the internet in society, and the mechanism that we're seeing is about creating a new infrastructure layer for society and the economy and these new kinds of economic and even political and governance structures. Um, and so from my perspective, this is an opportunity for, in some ways, like a new era for humanity that is more deeply connected, that is more deeply global, that is more deeply inclusive. And in the face of the harsh macro complexities that we, we face as a humanity, we need to be anchored in and inspired by something like that. And I think that's what brings us together and inspires a lot of us uh, in this industry. So if you zoom in a little bit more from there, you have this big picture view of kind of what is this infrastructure and, and the role it plays. I think if you zoom in to just say the past two to three years, it's been incredible. The amount of create, creative explosion of projects, protocols, infrastructure, technology, it's extraordinary what we've seen happen in the past two to three years. Um, and I think many of you who are here and many of the developers that are, that are building have, have been inspired by that kind of creative explosion. And so it's, it's extraordinary what has been accomplished. Um, and we're incredibly proud, obviously, to have so many of these innovators here in the room with us today and, and, and building in this space. I, I think when we think about what has been developed over the past two to three years, obviously, um, we think about what we've been able to do with USDC. Uh, it's one of the kind of killer apps. We've seen killer apps starting to emerge, stablecoin, um, trusted stablecoins are a killer app. It's such a fundamental piece. And when we started Circle over nine years ago, we had this idea of building on crypto and building essentially a native protocol for money on the internet, designed with that same DNA that had made the internet of information and communications and data move instantly, globally, frictionlessly for free, something that would make money, a native data type that was programmable by anyone who had an idea. And this promise of money moving the same way that, that, that information and content and data moves, it's right here in front of us. And just in the past two to three years, we've just seen extraordinary growth, not just in how many stablecoins are out there or how many transactions are happening, but tens of thousands of products and apps and protocols and services are connecting to this open infrastructure. Uh, and that's profound. And I think that brings us back to thematically, you know, what is this moment? Why is this such a pivotal moment? And the pivotal moment is anchored in that this is our utility value moment. What are we going to do to drive utility for society and the economy? And what's it going to take for this to go mega scale and to go 
to half a billion people, a billion people, et cetera. So I want to touch on some of the things that we see. First, there are huge problems to solve in the experience of end users. Um, we need to have models for interacting on blockchains where we can safely use our identity and the entities that we interact with can safely know that we're a trusted entity in some way. So we have to find ways to bring forms of identity to blockchains. But at the same time that we do that, given the fundamentally open and transparent nature of blockchains, we have to significantly up our game in terms of privacy layers on top of blockchains. So privacy and identity are sort of two sides of the same coin. And we need to see um, ad advancements that are happening in, in zero knowledge proofs and others applied in ways where we can have provable identity and, and, and provable credentials, but also more privacy than is even possible today on pseudonymous blockchains. And part of this is also just part of solving the user experience problem. C the crypto of it needs to go into the background. And people need to be able to interact with apps and services and content and transactions without knowing that they're using crypto. I don't know I'm using SMTP when I send an email with Gmail. I do know that. But uh, a lot of people don't know that. Um, and that's OK. People don't need to know what layer one chain they're on or even what stablecoin they're using. They just need to know that it's just frictionless interaction with, with, with data and money and content and the like on this new architecture. We need safe, scalable, and energy efficient public blockchains. Um, and I think what we're seeing happen in the, in the, in the space today is we're, we're really coming into this. I like to call it the dial-up to broadband phase of, of blockchain. And we're seeing the broadband phase coming online. And that needs to happen. We've seen this, this dramatic move of Ethereum to proof of stake. We're seeing layer twos, uh, layer ones, and other scaling models for what's necessary for this to become something that is used by everyday society for mission critical applications. And it has to be more safe. The amount of risk that exists in, in hacks and thefts and so on is terrifying to people um, and organizations who are terrified of, 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 of interacting with this infrastructure uh, as well. And so we, we have to create products and services that make this safer. And, and that, that's something that the industry needs to do better as well in terms of self-policing. And then finally, we have to have legal and regulatory clarity. We have to have that in a lot of areas here. We cannot live in a world where there's a, a sort of a universe that is essentially exists, attempting to not exist within the, the frameworks of how societies work. So we have to find ways to work with governments around the world to ensure that the risks that people are concerned about can be addressed. And a lot of that can be done through technical innovation, not necessarily uh, through, through, through regulation. But we, we, we do need regu regulatory clarity in certain areas. We're very focused on this concept of a payment stablecoin, or sometimes we're now calling tokenized cash. Um, we need statutory definitions with national governments around the world that recognize this as a form of money that is as good or, frankly, better than money in a bank. And we're getting really close. Uh, as we speak, uh, congressmen, senators, you know, leaders in the administration and the, and, and the US government are working hard to bring forth legislation that would deem this type of, uh, of, of digital payment instrument a, a fundamental part of the global financial system. And if we have that, if we have that at a statutory level, households, firms, and financial institutions will be able to accept it and use it for every day, everything. Um, and, and that's an incredible opportunity when we think about all the things that become possible with this open, programmable, composable world of money on the internet. So 
where I started, we're at this pivotal moment. The utility value phase of crypto is upon us. And I ask all of you to think about not what's hard right now, but zoom out and take that perspective, the perspective of the arc of the internet, the perspective of the fundamental DNA that's driving this organically emerging new infrastructure layer of the internet. I'd encourage you to think about what's happened just in the past two to three years and imagine what the world can look like in the next two to three years. And I think every single person here in this room can help realize that goal of bringing this to scale in society. And I just would also ask everyone here to keep focused on building a more open, more inclusive, and more integrated global internet economy. Thank you so much.